Alrighty, what is going on everyone? So we are at the RCD snubber section of the um, circuit design part of our project. So um, here, let me just go ahead and take a look at the circuit to show you what we're talking about. So these three components right here, this is the RCD snubber is what I'm talking about. Um, if you want a detailed explanation of what the RCD snubber is, how it works, what it does go and check out I have a previous video I'll actually link it in the description um, on it's like an in-depth tutorial on you know all those things I just mentioned all things RCD snubber um, and so in this video we're just going to be designing the RCD snubber for our specific application and that's going to be the extent to which I cover this so like I said if you want more information on it then I would say go check out that video I linked in the description so Without further ado, let's just jump into it. Um, I'll just give a quick summary um, of what this, this circuit's doing, right? So we have a drain to source ringing on the MOSFET caused by parasit parasitic capacitance and leakage inductance. Um, that's kind of what we're trying, that's like a problem we're trying to solve right there. So the RCD server is designed to dampen the ringing and reduce stress on the MOSFET. So what this is going to do is improve the performance of our circuit and improve uh increase its longevity right because when you have components that are undergoing cyclical stress that would just cause them to fail sooner right and so your power supply won't won't last as long um as it would otherwise right and since all we have to do to to improve this is add three little components which cost you know maybe a few cents between all of them you know it's a pretty no-brainer um choice to to do this right so as of course you should probably know because i just showed you the circuit um, it consists of a resistor a capacitor and a diode right so these are their designators rsn csn dsn and of course sn stands for snubber so hopefully you can follow that part um, so yeah there are three main equations we'll cover and so i'll just kind of jump right into the the first one so um, i actually used and I'll, if I can find it on the internet, it's like an application note um, from, I think it's like on semi or someone, maybe TI, who just showed you how, showed us how to calculate these values. So this, yeah, because this circuit right here is actually not mentioned in this data sheet at all. Um, and so this actually will fit, I wish I had a good name for these types of circuits, but it's it kind of goes along um, with this and then you also have like the mosfet gate drive circuit right these two circuits aren't explicitly mentioned in our circuit in the data sheet of this but they are still applicable um, like you still need to know how to design them right because they're going on our power supply so we have to find um, external sources that are beyond this data sheet in order to figure out how to to, to make this design right so I guess also I should note that the design will still technically work without this and without this, but these uh, are, they improve the design dramatically, right? So we're going from making just a power supply that kind of works to one that works really well, right? Um, so yeah, so let's, let's just talk about the equations now. So the way we go about this first is uh, we're first going to calculate the, the power that is needed to dissipate, be dissipated by the snubber circuit as a whole and of course most of the power or all of it even is going to be dissipated by the the snubber resistor right the capacitor serves as like a filter slash um you know it's its job is to dampen the ringing and um then the resistor is supposed to dissipate all the power so hopefully uh you're familiar and i even covered this in that other when i talked about that that gauge drive circuit video um because what's going on here is we have parasitic components that are causing the ringing, right? So if you remember, um, and if you say you have like an ideal circuit with a capacitor and an inductor in series and you, you put a voltage across one of them, then there's going to be an infinite amount of ringing, right? As they, they charge and discharge each other uh, back and forth and back and forth, right? So that's like the ringing, that's where the ringing comes from is, is we, and, and so in order to prevent that ringing, we put a resistor between the two and then it, it dissipates the power and dampens the ringing. So um, that's just kind of how that works right there. Alrighty, so like I said, the first equation is an equation figuring out how much power the snubber needs to dissipate. And it is given by this whole 
um, term here, this whole quant this this equation right here. So we'll just quickly go over the variables that they name. So L leak stands for the leakage inductance. We have I peak squared, which is the primary side peak current. Then we have V snubber, which is just the voltage drop across the snubber. And then we have this quantity NVO, which is just the output voltage. And then N is our primary to secondary winding ratio. So where I got the leakage inductance value from, and so this is, we, we don't actually measure this value, though you could, because um, we, we don't actually have a board made yet. So what you might do is after you make the first run of your board, you measure the leakage inductance, and then you can go back and, and do, uh, you know, and iterate another design, right? Make a second version of this that would be a little bit better or something. But um, whenever we're, you know, doing the first design, what, what you finally kind of do is if you do any research, um, this, so what, what leakage inductance is, is um, it's, it's related to the, the primary inductance of our transform, right? So it's the inductance that kind of leaks, um, like, like all the inductance is supposed to be going towards uh, that, the magnetic field that the couple, that's coupled with our primary and secondary uh, windings. But some of it, not all of it gets coupled, right? So that's where the leakage inductance comes. Um, and so the typical industry standard or what, what uh, transformer manufacturers are able to achieve is 3% of your primary inductance, right? So we're just going to estimate the leakage inductance to be 3% of our primary inductance. And we already know our primary inductance to be two millihenries. We calculated that way back in the transformer video. So we know the LP is two millihenry. So 3% of that is 0 0.06 millihenries, right? So that's where we got that value from. We already um, calculated the peak, primary peak, uh, primary side peak current to be 1.94 amps. We did that also in this MOSFET transformer controller video. Um, so we already know that value to be 1.94 amps. V snubber, um, the application note mentioned to make V snub a uh, 2 to 2.5 times NVO and then NVO is primary secondary winding ratio times our output voltage so we have 10 for our, our primary secondary winding ratio and 24 for our output voltage um, as was specified so then you multiply those together you get 240 so that's where this came from and then V snubber is 2, 2 to 2.5 times that so 480 is where that comes from. So, and then you have FS, which is the switching frequency. So that's kind of where we got all these numbers from. If you plug them in, you get a value that is 24.84 watts. And I'll be honest, when I first did this, I literally went back and like triple, quadruple check this to make sure it was right. Because if you're making a 120 watt power supply, and you're dissipating 24 watt this is wasted power right here right this is that's a lot right that's like one sixth to one fifth of our power right there and you might think this so there's no way this value is right and the answer is it's it's right um this is just a consequence of the flyback transformer right this is this is a, a characteristic of it and that is the more the higher you get on um as you go up above like 100 watts the flyback uh, trans flyback converter gets just less and less efficient. I mean, it, it gets less and less efficient, you could say, as power increases, right? So that's like a downside to it. So um, we'll start exploring other topologies to get better efficiency ratings when we get um, this high in our uh, power ratings. But yeah, that's like just a quick lesson that we just learned from this this uh, like application over right here is that, yeah, this is, this is a real value. We are actually going to be dissipating 24... 0.84 watts across that resistor. So that is a good segue into calculating some values for the resistor. And the way you go about that is you're familiar with the equation, hopefully V squared over R is equal to P. So we just swap those two terms. And so when we're trying to calculate the resistor value, we already know that V snub is um, 480. So we do 480 squared divided by PSN, which we just solved for. So then you get R to be a value of uh, 9,275. Um, so that's where we just calculate R. It's very straightforward, pretty simple. It's wonderful. Um, 
so yeah and then the comments I want to make about this are so this is the value that we have to go with and you've heard me talk about this multiple times like power rating of your resistor matters a lot so we got to dissipate almost 25 watts of power so what you'll see a lot of circuits do and let me see if there's this one's not done in this one but i'll look at a reference design so look at this okay so here's what they did is they have two resistors in parallel to do the dissipating right and that's probably what you're going to have to do um with this project as well right so what you might find is uh finding a resistor that can dissipate like five watts and then you just put five of them in parallel or five of them in series that's probably what you're going to have to do um because you gotta you gotta get to that value, you know, and you have to be able to dissipate 25 watts of power, and you gotta do it with you know total resistance of 9,275 ohms, and so the best way to do it is to put them in and put multiple resistors that are rated you know like five watts or something. And the thing is, power will sum whether it's in parallel or in series. Um, maybe, hopefully, that's a little bit intuitive. Um, if you didn't know, it's it's because uh, voltage sums in series and current sums in parallel. So Therefore, since power is just a multiple of those, it's it doesn't matter which one you, you sum. Hopefully that made sense, right? Power is multiple, voltage and current. Um, and since, you know, in, in both cases, uh, in, in series, the voltage sums. Therefore, power is still summing. And in parallel, current sums. Therefore, power is still summing, right? Hopefully that made sense. Um, if not, I can do it in more in-depth. Just comment down below and I'll give you a more in-depth video about what I just said um, so yeah so this is our this is our resistance like I just said and we got to find out we got to figure out a way to dissipate 25 watts of power and so what I'll say is you're probably gonna have to find some type of through hole resistor that has a really high power rating and find multiple of them um, that seems like that's going to be the play here so it's probably not gonna be a surface mount component um, so yeah um, so yeah so let's just move on to the uh, snubbing capacitor or C snub and so there's an equation for that which is VSN over Delta VSN times RSN times FS so VS Delta VSN so what this is is um, how much you want the voltage across like the resistor to change so in this case it looks like we have 10% uh, is the value that was selected and so what what I mean by that is, uh, ten percent of four hundred eighty is forty eight, right? So that means we only wanted to change forty eight volts, and the the way we got to forty eight volts is we said we only want this to change ten percent. Like ten percent is a is an industry we call it like industry goal or industry standard, right? Is is to make VSN ten percent. So that's where they got that value from. Then we have RSN, which I approximated to be ninety two hundred. Then we have our switching frequency, which again we already have established that we specified that so we get a CSN value of 9.88 nanofarads so again just make sure your your snubbing capacitor is appropriately rated for voltage so if you look at this you see that we're connected the drop across this is V bus right so we're literally going uh, like up to 375 volts here so it's this thing's got to be beefy um, it's got to be pretty big, right? So, um, make sure it's appropriately voltage rated, right? That's a big, big thing for here. Um, you'll probably be able to find a, a surface mount component with this that has the appropriate voltage rating. I think the package size will probably be decently sized, like 0805 or something like that, or probably even 0206, but you can definitely do it. And lastly, of course, um, the only note I want to make for D snub, just make sure that your V peak reverse max is greater than V in max times the square root of two because if you look at the circuit that's what it has to resist um, is is when the voltage um, it drop it tries to go against this because uh, the way this works is whenever the the switch is closed you have a voltage drop that's going to go from from the positive to negative right here so it's going to try to go across this this diode like from here to here and so they just kind of have to withstand that. So we're looking at like 375 volts again for our maximum rating. Um, 
And then whenever what happens is whenever the switch is open, then that's when the leakage inductive spike occurs and it occurs in a reverse fashion, right? So it goes from, we have a plus here and then a minus here. So it's then it's going across and that's what the diode is there. That's when the diode is forward bias and is, is allowed to conduct. So that's the only thing you gotta make sure don't really worry about anything else than that. I mean, some power dissipated by the diode would actually be pretty helpful because um, just make sure its current rating is high enough or just make sure its power dissipation rating is, is pretty high because um, um, we're just doing the resistor some favors by not making it having to, to dissipate all 25 watts of power. So yeah, that's, if you wonder why power supplies get hot, and it's probably one of the reasons why right here is you got 25 watts of, of basically turning into heat. So that's pretty much all I have to say about the RCD snubber. If this video helped you out, please drop a like. That'll help my channel out immensely. So I really appreciate that. If you want to stay up to date on the rest of the videos that are in this project series that I'm working on right now, then subscribe and I'll just keep you up to date with the uploads because they'll be coming regularly. So, um, you know, if you want to stay up to date, do that. I also post a lot of other electrical engineering related videos. I'll do uh, projects are pretty much my bread and butter here. So I'll be, if you have a project idea that you want, then drop a comment down below and I'll add it to, I have a whole queue of, of project ideas that I'll, I'm looking at. Um, any other questions, if you have questions related to this video or anything else, electrical engineering related, I will even make a, like a, a video dedicated to answering that question. Um, if necessary. So yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.